I guess I'll come back. So I've got Friday favorites and fooies for you today, and I've got some old favorites, some new favorites, and I actually do have two fooies, which that's a big deal because we haven't had a fooie in a long time, and we have two of them now. So definitely want to share with you why these products didn't work for me this week. So yeah, I hope that you had a great week. Mine was good, and yeah, just lots to talk about. So let's jump in. Okay, no nail favorite this week. I just chipped off that brown china glaze polish and I haven't repainted my nails. So no nail favorite, but for eyes this week, I pulled out my Lorac Pro 2 palette and I mentioned in my review video on this palette, I just like this one better than the first one. For some reason, this one works better for me. Um, I don't know why. I think maybe just the contrast in the colors or the nature of the collection of colors in this palette. I'm not sure. It just doesn't seem to get as muddy for me. Um, so I did a look with chrome, I did a look with um, beige, and actually I think I used a little bit of snow in the middle. And then of course these blending shades are really pretty. I mean these are very, very pigmented. Lorac shadows are very pigmented. Um, they are very soft. You've probably heard everybody talk about Lorac shadows, especially with the Mega Pro, which I didn't end up getting. I'm really proud of myself. I did not need that palette, so I didn't get it. Um, but you've probably heard, they're just very soft shadows, so they can kind of tend to um, blend together if you blend too much, if you're an over blender like me. Um, but I just have to kind of alter my technique a little bit, not, not get as crazy with my blending. Just I um, kind of go a little bit more light-handed with my brush, like barely touch my eyelid, whereas with other ones I kind of dig in a little bit more to blend really, really well. This doesn't, these don't really need that. You can just barely sort of touch and they'll blend together. Um, so yeah, I wore that this week and really did enjoy it. And then I used my Makeup Forever Artist palette that I got at the makeup show. I really hadn't played around with this very much at all, just kind of swatching it when I first got it. So this was the first time for me to really like dig into it and use it in some looks. So I did a look with this kind of taupey shade, this purple and this dark kind of eggplant purple. I mean, they are very nicely pigmented. I mean, look at that dark purple. That is like, whoa, really intense. Um, I mentioned in my makeup show haul, I'm not totally convinced on these Makeup Forever shadows yet. They're just a little bit hit and miss. I really, really enjoy certain colors and then other ones just kind of seem to fall short. So I think it's just a little bit hit and miss as far as the particular colors. Um, but these are all really nice and they worked really well on the eyes. They wore really well. These have a very different texture than the Lorac shadows. These are more almost like sleek shadows. They have almost a little bit of a tackiness to them. Um, so you really, you wouldn't probably have as much of a problem with overblending with these because they're a little bit more tacky. So you have to kind of dig into your eye a little bit more. That sounds horrible. Dig into your eye to really do a little bit more blending where you definitely don't need to do that with the Lorac shadows. So just kind of different techniques to apply them. Um, but anyway, I just really like this palette. I think it's cute and little, and I like that you can see all the colors on the outside packaging and it's just a fun one. For cheeks this week, oh my gosh, I fell in love with this product. This is amazing. I just wiped it off because NARS packaging gets so nasty and dirty looking. This is the, um, what is this called? The contour blush. Contour blush, that's why a lot of times I save my outside packaging so I can tell what in the world it is. The contour blush in Paloma. And oh my goodness, this is like perfection. It really is. It is so pretty. Um, it's like in between a bronzer and a blush. And it's just this beautiful kind of like, I don't know, taupey sort of a bronzer with a little bit of like, I don't know, rosy undertones or something. So it totally works as a blush and a bronzer or a contour in one. And the highlight is very subtle. I mean, you can see it's like hardly, hardly even visible, but you can see it when you put it on your cheeks but I just love this. So I use this multiple times this week. I did apply it today. I'd already applied another blush and then I remembered, oh, I wanted to show y'all. Don't look at this side because I have a zit. But over here, um, <laughs> this is the better side today. Um, it's like a, it's a bronzer, but it's also a blush. I mean, so saying that it's a contour blush is perfect wording and I just love that it. it's one of those products that it warms up your cheeks, it gives you color, but you can also use it as kind of a shaping product to really kind of um, go a little bit lower 
so that you get a little bit more shape to your face and you can kind of chisel out your cheekbones just a little bit. But then you're also getting the benefit of a blush. So I absolutely love this. I haven't really looked into any of the other colors, so I don't know if the other ones would work for my skin tone, um, but Paloma, I stink and love it. It is so pretty and amazing. Um, the highlighter I would probably change. Um, I would add a little bit more sparkle to it, but if this is more natural, so I think that they did a good job to put something like this in there, but for me, I like a little bit more of a I don't know, glowy, glittery, or whatever highlight. Um, but this is very nice and natural, and just a great product. I found a new nude lip combo this week that I really enjoy, and it's what I'm wearing right now. It's Max Whirl Lip Liner, which is just kind of like a pinky brown color. I just mentioned this recently, so you just heard about it. And then Charlotte Tilbury's Nude Kate. This is like so fancy. I mean, look at the packaging. It just, it feels foo-foo and fancy. Uh, and this lipstick is expensive. I think it's like $32 or something. So honestly, I mean, you can look at the color there. It's kind of like a peachy sort of a nude. It has quite a bit of yellow and orange undertones in it. So by itself, I wasn't sure that I was a fan of it. But once I added in Whirl, where is Whirl? <laughs> once I added in Whirl, um, it just added a little bit of warmth and dimension and made it more wearable for what I look for in a nude lip because I feel like just this by itself was a little bit, it wasn't quite working for my skin tone. It was making me look a little bit sickly. But with Whirl, I feel like it really works well together. So I love this combo. It just feels fancy um, and you gotta love a good nude lip, you know? And then I also broke out one of my Kat Von D Studded Kiss lipsticks. This one is in Boho 5 or Bo House, whichever it is. It's a five, so I'm not sure how you're supposed to pronounce it. It's like a really, I mean, look at that. Oh my gosh, so pretty. It's kind of like Max Rebel, but it's matte um, and maybe a little bit brighter. These wear like iron on your lips because they're matte, so they just really stay around a long time. They are, um, they're a dry formula. So if you hate matte lipsticks, you will not like these. You will think that they are so dry and uncomfortable. But if you're a matte lipstick girl and you like matte lipsticks because you don't have to worry about them going everywhere, I think you'll love these. And this one is such a pretty fun color for fall. It's still fall, it's still berry, but it's it's bright and it's fun too. Not to mention the packaging of these. It's just so cute and it's like rocker and I just love it. So Boho 5 or Boho House, whichever it is, I really loved this week. Okay, now onto the Fooey. So the first one is the Elf Baked Eyeshadow in Moonlight Serenade. I went to wear this with um, some of my other baked eyeshadows from Elf, and I really like the baked eyeshadows. They're really pretty, but this one, it's swatching better than it worked on the eyes. It had no pigmentation. Like, I just could not get it to show up. So you can see it on my hand right there. I did try to wear it as a face highlight and it worked okay like that, but I still had to build it up. Like this was me really digging into my hand to get some pigmentation there. So it's just, I don't know, it falls short. And I think it's more disappointing because the other baked eyeshadows from e.l.f. I really, really love. And I feel like there's a lot of really good ones like Toasted, Burnt Plum, um, Bark, I think is one of them. Those are all gorgeous, but this one, for some reason, just didn't cut it. Just kind of sad. And then I know y'all are going to be so surprised by this, but I have a ColourPop Fooey this week. Um, but, you know, I think it's like MAC or Urban Decay or some of my most favorite makeup brands. I love their stuff, but I don't love every single thing from them. There might be a product that just doesn't work for me or it's just not something I prefer or there's something about the formula that just doesn't click with me. And that's the way this is. This is in the color Deck, and it looks absolutely beautiful in the pan. It's a silver, like a gunmetal silver with multi-dimensional glitter. I mean, looking at it there, that looks amazing, you know? And even when I swatch it, y'all are gonna go, well, what's the problem? It looks amazing, because it really does. I mean, that's what it looks like. It looks beautiful. <laughs> But something about when I got this on my eyes, it just didn't work. And I think what I found is that it doesn't have 
at least mine, I don't know if maybe I just got a weird one, it doesn't seem to have enough base color. It's just a lot of glitter and almost too much of the gel type formula. So I kept having to build it and it just, it didn't have a lot of pigmentation once I got it on my eyes. It just, I don't know, it was lacking. I mean, looking at this watch, it looks beautiful, but for some reason on my eyes, it was just too much glitter, too much of the gel type formula and not enough color and something holding it all together. So I love ColourPop so much. I think their stuff is just amazing. But for some reason, this one just didn't cut it for me. All right, guys, so those are all my Friday favorites and foodies for this week. So I hope that you really enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and let me know what you have been loving this week or not so much loving. Let me know what your weekend plans are. I just love chatting with you guys. Ask me any questions that you have down below. I'm always happy to answer those. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and I'll see you in my next video.